Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Francie. Thank you for joining me today from my humble abode. I have settled in for the end of the year. I don't expect any more travel for the Out of Spec team, but of course, if I do, that would be fine. But it's also nice to kind of settle down, but I will definitely be bringing more and more podcasts from the travel that I did, really interesting interviews and updates about the EV space to the channel and to our podcast. So stay tuned, subscribe follow us uh, so you can make sure to stay up to date with the really interesting topics that we've been able to cover and interesting people that we've been able to dive into conversations with. As I sit and settle and the end of the year comes closer and closer, I have to think about the future. Our cities and our roadways continue to quietly hum with the promise of a cleaner future. And while there are still plenty of challenges and doubt and criticism as we move towards a more electric future, there is consistent progress in this space. Innovative technology, teams working towards absolutely new technology in terms of our EVs and our hardware and basically how we're going to electrify the future and also just actual groundbreaking feats, literally. And we'll be talking about a first in the world of EV charging today featuring the first Nevi funded EV charging station to go live just outside of Columbus, Ohio, of all places. Back on episode 175, I gave a bit of an update on the current standing of the NEVI charging program in the US, specifically which states are moving ahead in their work, where the money has been awarded, and how many miles of corridors have been assigned to the program, and more. So if you're more interested in an overarching update back in from, I think it was October, go check that out. Uh, it's interesting as well. And I double checked and the resources that I used for that update haven't really been updated. So I'm wondering if there will be a rounded off end of the year update from Nevi, or if these facts and figures will remain the same. I do know that it's at least adding one more number to it. And that is just the number one of Nevi sites that have gone live in 2023. Uh, but there's still the rest of December left, so we'll we'll see. Maybe there will be more updates. So a brief reminder of the NEVI program as it exists in the U.S. It is the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, a.k.a. NEVI program. It's a federal initiative designed to support the development and expansion of electric vehicle charging infrastructure across the nation. It is administered by the Federal Highway Administration and supported by the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation, which is also just known as the Joint Office. And in will invest $5 billion to deploy fast charging along more than 79,000 miles of designated alternative fuel corridors. Why they didn't round it up to 80,000, I'm not sure. Each state has had to put forward their proposals that show their commitment, their comprehensive planning, and even the partnerships that they are planning to use or already have in place to support their plans that will require NEVI funding. And each state has done so. There are approved plans, and you can actually check out each state's approved plans, and I'll put a link in the show notes below. I have a few numbers here for you to describe the magnitude of this effort. $1.5 billion of funding was set for fiscal year 2022 and fiscal year 2023. And I'll remind you, just for some context, especially relevant to the Aspect podcast, because we had some coverage of the specific first opening of their charging hubs, but Mercedes-Benz of North America has their charging program of North America where, they're, where they are investing $1 billion in their own charging network. And $1.5 billion was set for fiscal year 2022 and 2023 from the NEVI program. So just a bit of reference there. So far, we have $885 million in funding for fiscal year 2024. Now over to Ohio, who is apparently leading the charge in NEVI funded sites, not only breaking ground, but becoming operational. One bit of info that I mentioned in that podcast from uh, many weeks ago is that on October 18th of this year, Ohio was the first state in the nation to break ground on a NEVI station. And this is the same site that has gone live, which is located west of Columbus, Ohio, at the Pilot Travel Center along Interstate 70 at US Route 42. Just this month, earlier in December, the site went live, which is great. And honestly, a very quick turnaround, if you ask me, in terms of breaking ground in October and going live on December 8th. It points to a real coordination between all the moving parts here, which include not only EVgo and Pilot, but also the utilities and the crews that were involved to and, and required to get a site up and running in such a short timeline. So I'd love to know more about the secrets there or if construction actually took a bit longer. Maybe it started earlier, but from what I see, uh, they broke ground in October and went live this month. 
So where's the site? What is the site like? It, like I said, it's one of the EVGO GM Ultium Pilot Flying J Travel Center sites that are going to be placed along corridors. So it's that joint partnership site between the those three companies, and they are putting in charging stations across the nation. It has four stalls, two chargers, but um, four stalls, and it doesn't look like it's a pull through. There's no price listed on PlugShare either. And I'll remind folks that while EVGO does operate and maintain these chargers and these systems in this program with Pilot Flying J, Pilot Flying J actually owns the hardware and they are branded as such. And what does that mean? Well, Pilot Flying J also is setting the prices. This is important to note, especially if you have a problem with the prices. On PlugShare, I see folks referencing a price point of around 59 cents per kilowatt hour. This is a pricey cost, I do have to say. High powered DC charging is more expensive than at home charging. Let's face it, this infrastructure is not easy or cheap to build. Our utilities have high demand charges. They aren't really fully outfitted for the demand that the EV charging is going to put on the, on the network, on the grid, and in general, as far as I know. I'm also really interested in studying how we will adapt our grid to the needs of a more electric future. And electricity in general just isn't cheap. So it makes me wonder, how high will these prices for public charging rise? And of course, we'll continue to track that. One thing I do notice on the photos of uh, on the site for Plugged Share is that instead of the Ultium branding, which is the GM branding that I'm used to and that I've seen on these sites and also on other just EVGO GM sites that they help fund, is that instead they have GM Energy here. And I'll bring up this photo. Is this significant? I don't know, probably not, but it is something to note. And definitely it's a more clearly GM branded site now, which perhaps is the goal. Of course, the biggest selling points of these stations is that they're 350 kilowatts, they are lit, they are covered with a canopy, and they have the familiar amenities of a truck stop, of a Pilot Flying J convenience store just right off the highway. And also folks are present here at all times inside the establishment, right? They're also apparently outfitted with the ability to do basic troubleshooting for the EV chargers, which I haven't had the chance to try out yet. I haven't run into a problem where I needed their help. I actually took a recent EV road trip taking Kyle's Rivian from Chattanooga, Tennessee to Cleveland, Ohio, which you might know if you've been listening to the podcast. Episode 203 actually dives into my road trip experience. It went live just a few days ago, but I first hit three Pilot Flying J stations in a row. The first one was the big one outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, that has a huge canopy and it's pull through, which was really cool. It's the one that you usually see in all the photos because it's right near their headquarters, Pilot Flying J's headquarters. So it's big and a, a big step in the right direction for them. The other two were not pull through, but they were lit, had the canopies, had the trash cans, the buckets for the windshield wiper fluid, and that was pretty good. Uh, at one point, I had a little trouble with a tap to read the card, and then at the next station, one of the chargers was down. But I was able to know that ahead of time, and the other chargers worked. So in general, I am loving this setup, but go check out the other podcasts so you can really hear my thoughts about that. So I have to wonder, how is Ohio so far ahead in the game of give it, getting NEVI-funded sites up and running? And maybe, I don't know, maybe Ohio is ahead on a lot more things than just this. But I think it comes down to the fact that their government and institutions really worked quickly to get their NEVI plans made, proposed, and approved submitted and, and get the ball rolling. They're likely a very collaborative partner with charge point operators like EVGO and EA. And I'm really cur curious about the permitting and utilities processes and coordination going on there as these are big timeline extender aspects of putting up EV charging sites. It also makes me curious about the EV incentives that Ohio has because they are very forward moving with their EV charging infrastructure, but they have very few EV incentives when it comes to purchasing an EV, unlike states like Colorado and California. So Ohio does actually not offer state level incentives for either new or used EVs. And as for at home charging, there are also no state incentives, but there are uh, companies like Firelands Electric Cooperative, which is an electricity provider of Ohio that offers existing customers $250 credit when they're installing level two charging at home or at other buildings. So you have to kind of find these incentives, it looks like if you're going for charging, but nothing if you're purchasing an EV at this point. Of course, there is the argument that this is not on states to subsidize what cars that we buy. If EVs need to be less expensive, 
that's perhaps more on the automakers. Uh, and perhaps it's not even on the federal government either. either. But of course, this is an interesting debate. What do you think? Nonetheless, Ohio is keeping the ball rolling. Taking some information from the folks over at Drive Ohio, advancing smart mobility, Ohio is looking at breaking ground on production of more than 24 fast charging DC fast charging sites with NEVI funding across the state in this first round with an operational end goal of 2024. Additionally, the state is set to receive $104 million in NEVI funding over five years and is apparently already in the second round of planning for a potential 25 additional charging stations. Other states set to go live with NEVI funding soon include, believe it or not, Hawaii, which has firm contracts in place for their sites. And there are another 17 states that are coming in behind these two trailblazers that have bids out still, but they're not finalized from what I'm gathering from the most recent updates. Before we wrap up, let's see how the Pilot Flying J stations, which are obviously helping to take advantage of NEVI funding, are coming along. On December 5th, EVGO announced that they have 17 locations live with the Pilot Flying J program in 13 states, and three of those stations, like I said, I've actually visited. So by the end of 2023, EVGO says that they expect at least 25 Pilot Flying J travel centers to feature EV fast charging with approximately 200 locations by the end of 2024. And in total, of course, this is an initiative to put out 2,000 high-powered fast charging stalls at up to 500 Pilot Flying J travel centers across the U.S. Having the quantity is great, but also, of course, there's the pressure of the quality of the charging experience. I do have to say I had a great time at the PFJ stations that I hit. A great time. Whatever. The charging works. I got what I needed. So keep up to date with the Out of Spec podcast to track how we track NEVI funding and all the relevant topics that touch this. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'd love to know your thoughts on this topic in the comments. Let me know if you have seen this Ohio site. It looks like I missed it by sheer days when I was driving up from Chattanooga to Cleveland in early December. All right, hope you have a great day and I will catch you next time on the Out of Spec podcast.